Welcome back to uh, Revamped Outdoors. Today we're going to do a little video on reeds for duck calls. So if you're interested in that, stick around. So we're going to talk about reeds. These are reeds. You might be familiar with reeds if you're not a hunter based on woodwind instruments. There's a soundboard on a duck call similar to uh, the bottom portion of a reed of something like a clarinet. Sometimes there's floating reeds and different instruments. The idea is the same. This reed moves around, makes noise. That noise is then amplified on a soundboard and produces a very large noise. You have a barrel on your duck call that you blow into. The soundboard generally comes out into a bell or something uh, a little bit wider that's to project that sound outward. So basically all we're going to do is talk about dimpling reeds. Duck calls come in either a single reed form where there's just one reed next to the soundboard or they come into a double reed form. A double reed is just a single reed with another reed stacked onto it. That's what we're going to talk about today. When you make those you want to space those reeds out just ever so slightly away from each other and to do that you want to dimple it. I've been messing around with that quite a few different ways. If you look up how to tune a duck call on YouTube, you'll see a bunch of people just put a reed on their desk and they'll hammer it with a uh, screwdriver. I came up with a little bit different way to do that and I'm going to show you that today. But first, we need a set of reeds. So for me, I use a thicker material reed on the bottom of the soundboard and then I use a lighter material, thinner mill on top. So this is a 10 mil mylar material. In the bottom portion I use a 14 mil. I cut these out on a Cricut uh, CNC cutting machine. People usually use Cricuts for wedding invitations and nice cards. Obviously you can tell that's not my primary use for a Cricut, but I do find it to be very very useful, especially in this. I have to switch to a deep cut blade when I'm doing anything with mylar material but um, it does work quite well. You can get this as stencil material for quilting and you can get it for pretty cheap. So basically I run through uh, Fusion 360 to design this. I export it in a DXF file format and then the Cricut software can actually import DXF uh, files and then you just have to change the dimensions because the DXF is similar to SVG file format which doesn't accept dimensions. So once you get it in there, you can cut it out relatively easily. So once we have our reeds, we have to come up with a way to evenly space the dimple that we want it to come out away from this. So let's assume this is the soundboard here on your right side. And then we want to have this reed spaced out away from the, the reed that's hitting the soundboard. So we need to dimple that, indent it, if you will. And what I came up with is I designed a small clamp. And I wanted an offset. You can see the small little raised nub in there. I wanted an offset of about 0.6 millimeters between the first reed and the second reed. So all I did was designed up a small hinge, basically reed indent die set. This is printed out in 100% infill. PLA and the hinges themselves are just made out of the metal portion of a coat hanger. So the old style metal coat hangers you used to get back in the day, you can't find them anymore. I've held on to a couple packs of them and all you have to do is strip off the uh, plastic coating and you get a nice wire material in there. That incidentally is two millimeters in diameter. So um, designing this in the design space for 2.2 millimeters seems to do the trick uh, with the offset of my printer anyways. I printed this on the Anet A8. Seems to do quite well. Um, I had a little bit of warping on it, you can see, but I printed it with the non-essential parts to the bed. So by the time it was up five mils, five millimeters, excuse me, by the time it was up to five millimeters, it was just fine. So all we have to do now is place it into this jig essentially 
bring it back to the back. Let's see if I can show you. There's a little recess in there. Bring it down into the back and then have it hold there. And all I do is hit it with a pair of old pliers. So just smack it real quick, nothing fancy. Then when you open it up, you actually have an indent on your reed that allows it to offset onto another reed nice and easy. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but it creates a very nice indent. That indent doesn't push through at all. Very nice. So I think it works pretty well. I'll show you that a couple more times. Real simple. Throw it into here. Place it back. Pop it with a pair of pliers. And when it pops out, it has a nice indentation for the reed material. So there's a few things to keep in mind when designing this. Essentially you want your clearance to be okay so you're designing it for a specific reed only. I like to keep my reeds about 13 millimeters wide. Seems to work well in most of the calls I design so that's why I have it set for 13 millimeters. I will put this out on Thingiverse if anybody really uh, wants to try and make reeds like this. I like this spacing in front um, I haven't found that I needed to cut this reed down past where the indent would be, so it seems to work just fine for that. Overall, I think it greatly increases, or I guess it would increases my efficiency and reduces uh, the time to make any of these reed sets, because I can just throw this in here, line it up, close this. You can even get away with closing it with your hand if you're strong enough. And it comes out, it's another one done. So then I can pound out a lot of these really quickly and not have to worry about it. So I thought it was kind of a nice way of utilizing 3D printing in a different different kind of manner. I've actually made a few of these indenting stamps, I guess you could call them, with uh, letters in them as well. All you do is just offset the negative portion of the stamp, slightly larger, about 0.2 millimeters on each edge. And it actually stamps out letters and words. So you could also use this for embossing on crafts if that's something you're into. Um, yeah, you might not think that a guy like me uses a cricket, But I tell you what, that's profiling. And profiling is wrong. I can use a cricket. I can use a cricket with the best of them. No shame. No shame. So I hope this uh, is useful for you in one of your future projects. If it is, maybe consider uh, giving the video a like. Maybe even consider subscribing. Love to have you part of the community. We're up to about 1,000 now, which blows my mind. So we hit that 1K mark. I'm not going to switch over to monetizing and all that because that's not what I'm about. I just like doing cool stuff, putting it on the Internet. Hopefully you enjoy it. So I hope you had a great Thanksgiving if you are in North America. If you're Canadian, um, you had a Thanksgiving a month ago. So hope that went well. If you're in the rest of the world, I just hope you had a good day. Hope you had a good week. Hoping you're having a good month. And if you're not, I hope it improves. Till the next one, keep your amps up and your filament dry.